They spoke only one language on Mars, which was one of the reasons why Earth languages fascinated them so. Mrs. Erdig had made the study of English her own hobby. English was rather popular, but lately more and more Martians were turning to Chinese. Before that, it had been Russian. But Mrs. Erdig held that no other language had the variety of inflection, subtlety, and meaning that English possessed. For example, the word righteousness. She mentioned it to her husband tonight. I'm telling you, I just cannot understand it, she said. I mean, it eludes me just as I feel I can grasp it. You know how inadequate one feels with an earth word that is too elusive. I don't know how it is, Mr. Erdig replied absently. His own specialty among earth languages was Latin, recorded only via the infrequent Vatican broadcasts. And this tells a good deal about what sort of Martian he was. Perhaps a thousand Martians specialize in Latin. Certainly no more. Inadequate. It's obvious, his wife repeated. Oh, why? You know, I wish you wouldn't make yourself so obtuse. One expects to feel superior to those savages there on the third planet. It's provoking to have a word in their language elude you. That, friends, is the start of one of the stories from Howard Fast's The Edge of Tomorrow. My name is David. Welcome to my channel. So, we are into vintage science fiction. If you watched my unboxing of my massive book haul, this was one of the books that was in there, and uh, you know, it said, caught my attention by saying, you know, science fiction is only a master writer can write it, and then uh, on the back blurb. Howard Fast, author some of, of some of the most popular books of our time, leaps all the barriers of time and space and imagination to create some of the most startling, provocative science fiction stories ever written. Read them to find out how great science fiction can really be. And as I read that during the unboxing, I said, challenge accepted. And so I sort of committed myself in my mind that I was going to start with this one from that uh, vintage haul. And I came into it not having high expectations. I mean, I hadn't heard of Howard Fast. I'm sure Steve Donahue and Michael K. Vaughn would probably be able to tell me all of the great things that this man has written in his illustrious career. I mean, obviously he was considered to be a popular author and one of the best science fiction authors at some point in time, according to the, the book itself. And this one has in it, let's see, seven different stories. So The First Men, The Large Ant, Time and Cats, Cato the Martian, The Cold Cold Box, The Martian Shop, and The Sight of Eden. And as any short story collection is going to have, it's a mixed bag in here. Um, not all of the stories were fantastic. None of them were terrible. And some of them were Far better than I expected. Now, the, the, the three that I enjoyed the most were The Large Ant, which was the first one I read, actually. Even though it came second, it's the, the very first story in the book was 33 pages long, so I picked it up on a, an evening where I didn't have a lot of time, so I jumped to the next story and eventually circled back to The First Men. Um, Cato the Martian, which I read the little excerpt about, uh, where it's the husband and wife on Mars that are fascinated with the English language. Uh, but the, the real star of the show actually was the final story that I read in here, and that was The Sight of Eden. I really thoroughly enjoyed that one. Um, this book overall, I had thought was probably going to be about three star read uh, at best. And that's probably about where it was sticking to until I read that last story. And I think that bumped it up to about a three and a half, maybe even a four star overall. Um, it was an enjoyable collection of stories. This is, It reminded me what vintage science fiction can be, especially in the shorts. And for those that haven't caught the host of announcements out there, uh, November, there is going to be New Worlds November which is going to be a booktube-wide read-along event where each week they have different uh, types of science fiction that people are to read. And the idea is that you're reading short stories or shorter 
books such as this, you know, it's 120-ish pages. Uh, this is something that you could get through easily in a week. Probably could even finish in a day if you were dedicated and had the time and uh, fewer distractions to be able to sit down and read it. But it reminded me just how much fun science fiction can be. And it got me excited not only to read more of my vintage science fiction, but it uh, whetted my appetite for Ray Bradbury, who's going to be coming up very, very soon for me in the Read Every Author by Challenge, uh, and where I'll be actually starting with The Martian Chronicles, which surprised me that that was one of his first published works. Um, it was his second, and his first one never really got reprinted because Ray Bradbury didn't like it. It was not good quality. Looking back, he didn't want it to be recirculated, and I believe that in one of his future books, most or all of the stories from his very first one kind of got retouched up and polished and republished in a different book title. Um, but yeah, I, I'm i excited to read more Howard Fast now, uh, to, to see if this was a one, I can't say hit because it wasn't a full hit, but uh, if this was like the, the peak of what he could do, or if this was, um, you know, just one of many great things that he had out there. I don't know if he wrote any novels or if it was just all short stories. Um, probably a mix of both would be my guess. I mean, novels back in that era were, by and large, a lot of them were more in the novella range to what we would consider today with the one to 200 page range. But yeah, I mean, this is, this was a good one. If you see it on the shelf in a bookstore, don't hesitate to grab it if it's at a good price because it's got some fun stories in there. Uh, and all of them were enjoyable in their own unique way. So uh, I definitely enjoyed it. Stay tuned. Tomorrow I'm going to be talking another vintage science fiction story that actually surprised me even more than this one did. Yeah. Because last weekend I did some mood reading and uh, it was an impulse audiobook download and I it my expectations for it were in one place and it was far and away different than what I had hoped to to find for that so Stay tuned tomorrow when I talk about The Forever War by Joe Haldeman. So thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, and uh, have a wonderful day.